guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are talking about Alcatec Turbo Yeast. Mainly has we've been brewing for years. We've been brewing, uh, we've been brewing beers, we've been brewing wine, but we never really done a cider. When I say never really, we never brewed a cider. And I love cider, absolutely love cider. And the cider that I like, it cost absolutely fortune. Um, the reason I haven't generally done a cider because A, the amount of apples you need to create a juice, and obviously the cost um, that involved with that, and especially time as well. I don't mind waiting to brew the wine because you get quite a lot for for a lot for your time. Yet with the cider, because well, we drink or go through a lot of it, I will die of thirst by the time my five liter gets you know <laughs> get fermented and ready. So one of my viewers suggested the turbo yeast, and I never really never really heard of turbo yeast, I never really paid attention to it. However. It sounds like a magic thing. 135 grams will do 25 liters, and depending on the amount of sugar you put in, okay, um, in two days we can get 14%. In three days we can get 17%. You get five days you can go up to 19%, and seven to 10 days 21%. But of course you have to increase your sugar content. So the more sugar, the more percentage, but it will take you longer to get to where you need to be. So I was quite surprised that it's actually a really huge sachet, but it's got the clearing um, agents there as well. So basically all in one wonder thing. So, well, it's only cost under five hours. So I thought, you know what, I'll give this a go. And I thought, well, why don't I make some comparisons then actually see where we're at and how it's going to work. As I said, I've never tried this before, no, 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 try this with a cider. And the reason that really inspired me to do the video, I read many um, information online, a lot of people are really sort of skeptical and saying, it really gives it a really bad taste and you're not really meant to do this with a cider. And then you read some people say, oh, well, you can do. So anyway, rather than reading this, I'm going to do this myself. I'm not going to tell you what do I think, whether it's going to work or not. So as a first comparison, guys, I have, and I started this before, it's just a basic juice, uh, juice that I've purchased from, uh, that was um, Aldi's, and I've done two liters of juice and five grams of sugar, and um, I've done a normal cider yeast, the little sachet of five grams, and this has been fermenting for about a week. Okay, now we have five liter demijohns. This one has five liters of, that was, uh, Tesco's, no, still a little juice, okay, it's got 1 kg of sugar, 35 kg of turbo yeast, and this one's been fermenting for three days, okay, and I have already transferred this from one of my big, um, one of those brewing buckets behind me after the first fermentation, I've put it in here because it's really, really cloudy, and I added not a bentonite to clear it, because I've done the test on this side after three days, it was on 13%, 13%. And so far, like people said, it's got funny aftertaste. I have not, so far, haven't tasted any funny aftertaste. I buy normally Henry Weston cider or the Old Rosie. Henry Weston is 8.2% and it's a fizzy cider. I kid you not, so far that tastes very, very close to that and it's a high percentage. It's still now going like crazy because I've stirred it up, I put the bentonite in it, so it's doing its job now. Um, it's looking a bit clearer, you can see it's already settling, settling behind, so technically I gotta keep stirring it for a couple of days and it should really settle and become fairly clear. I don't mind if it's a little bit cloudy, cloudy cider, not a big problem for me, as long as it's not that cloudy that I can live with that, okay? And in a contrary to that as well, I've done here a fresh apples and I use the combination of Granny Smith, the um, cooking apples and I think they were just red apples, I can't remember what they were but anyway, um, I've done the five liters stupidly, I juiced five liters and I used my electric juicer, it's like one of the Chinese juicers but I'm surprised it's actually survived, poor little thing but it survived, however um, I had the juice and because it's um, the juice comes out it's got a lot of foam, I let it stand let the foam race to the top and then skim it and actually pull the juice in and then I end up have to squeeze in manually the um, 
all the pulp that got put aside because it doesn't really do well. The cheap juices don't seem to, or any juices, don't seem to do that well. They never juice 100%. So I squashed the rest by hand to five liter. And when I put it in there, I knew I had to leave the headspace because it said the turbo yeast, it actually doesn't even say to use airlock. It actually says not to use the airlock. When I'm like, well, but you, you might get contamination. Anyway, so I've put it in, I filled it up and I left like probably up to about here and I thought that'd be enough. As soon as I put it in there, literally, it was like a volcano. It was erupting like crazy. The yeast, it was instant. It was like, it would eat normal yeast for breakfast. So I had to siphon out half a liter. So technically, let's say we have about three and a half to four liters here because I did have to take a lot of it out. So anyway, so call it initial mixture was five liters of juice with one kilo of sugar and a 35 grams of turbo yeast. The original gravity of both of those were 1.100, so which is kind of an average. So as I said, this one was fermenting now for three days and this one was done yesterday. So they're both still going like crazy. I will have to then strain this one yet again and then put this probably in the damage room again to give it a chance and keep an eye on them. But if you stay with me, we will see and I want to tell you, we're gonna test all of those we're going to test what the final result is with the percentage of alcohol and of course the taste. So if you stay with me, I shall see you in, well, a few days. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, another couple of days have passed. I do apologize. I do sound a bit bunged up. I have another logie that's going around. This is like third time in the three months now. I can tell you, it's honestly, it's everywhere, as I'm sure you're probably aware. Anyway, so... Another few days have passed, okay, and I wanted to bring you the um, up to speed what was happening here. So the um, the one of the ciders that we did with the turbo yeast with the juice, okay, it's now finished fermenting, and I really don't want to leave it any longer. Um, the one I did with the fresh juice, it is still going like crazy. It has been a week already, and it's still literally bubbling constantly. I'm not really sure or I understand why it's um, continuing to ferment, considering the turbo yeast, um, the amount I've put in there is identical with the apple juice and the apples. And the fact is that it's meant to be finished in like five days maximum. And I didn't even put the maximum sugar in there, so I really don't understand. However, it is still going. So what I didn't want to do, guys, because it is an experiment for yourself, so you know obviously about the turbo yeast and whether and how good you can make a cider from it. I am going to bottle this cider today off the camera anyway, and then I'll have to come back and film when this one finished. It has started to drop down a little bit, so I've got a feeling it probably has another week to go. So it's, um, it's really really strange but anyway I have done a hydrometer reading you can see it's really really cloudy still but it basically works up as ten and a half percent I've tried it up a little bit it's actually so far in the process I can taste the alcohol but I can actually taste the apples whether with this one I couldn't really so far taste like that freshness of an apple so I'm really really hoping that this is gonna turn up uh, quite a bit nicer than the juice but of course a lot can happen in a week and we need to clear it and then we need to condition it so as I said guys I'm gonna just bottle this one off the camera and then I'll come back to you in a week or so when this one's finished doing when it's finished doing and obviously hopefully we'll be able to compare the results with this one to be fair I kind of lost a little bit of hope and um, it's been growing for ages I can't seem to reach with my pipette to the bottom to taste um, what it is like. It's occasionally bubbling, but I think it's starting to settle down slowly. So I'm just going to keep it there, just keep an eye on it and see what happens in the end anyway. But genuinely, so I will see you guys in a couple of days or maybe a week. We'll see. So guys, few weeks have passed. So here we have finally, finally the um, demijohn with the fresh juice and the turbo yeast. It took since the last well, the same video, but since the last part episode thing, that took an extra four weeks. This is turbo yeast, right? Considering it's literally done the initial juice, apple juice thing, within like a few days, and yielded 14%. That sat there for extra like four weeks. This is absolutely ridiculous. I keep looking at the thing. It's like, come on, it can still bubbling. It was like crazy. It's like up and down, up and down, up and down. Anyway, weather clearly stated it will sit there and then create... Uh, in a few days, 20%, it didn't. I've just done a reading now and it's uh, basically 15%. So it's one more percent, one percent more than the apple juice that we did. And I've given it a taste and so far it tastes like a rocket fuel. If I didn't do the hydrometer reading, I would say there's probably more towards like a 20% 20, um, 20 mark because it, it just tastes like 
just literally just tastes like pure alcohol. It's really odd. Initially, because I did this, I tested that first thing in the morning, just after a cup of coffee, like, whoa, crazy. I could taste this in my mouth, like I just had a shot of vodka, uh, which was not particularly pleasant, considering we are brewing cider. Anyway, on the other side, also the, um, the one that's made with the juice and a normal yeast actually finished pretty much at the same time. Although it's clarified um, a bit more, you can see that looks like a nice pot of a uh, nice pot of cider. I've done a test on this one, it's 10.5% and I had a slight taste of that one. You can see it's actually a bit clearer than, I know it's a different to compare, but nonetheless, so it's 10.5% and this actually tastes like really sweet Henry Weston's. It actually tastes kind of okay. So what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna basically um, transfer them from Demi Jones to my two litre uh, two litre bottles from the cider and then have some spare bottles, whatever is left. I'm going to let those sit in condition for another couple of weeks like I've done with the first lot. And what I'm going to do, when I come back next time on the same video, you guys will see us and we'll do a comparison in the colour and in the final testing. So I will see you in a well, couple of weeks. So guys, now is a fun time. I have left these guys to condition, well, the last um, the last two for about two weeks. And one of the things is to point out is, funnily enough, the one with the uh, real apple juice has changed colour since it's been conditioned. It's very cold at the bar here because we don't put the heating on for, well, for the preservation reasons of the alcohol and because, well, it's too big a room to heat up anyway, so there's no point. Nonetheless, it's quite cold in here. However, the cider as you can see it's actually changed this color to like a rose red this is um really really strange i never experienced that before but i don't know but it's all in a tasting just so we're clear okay just to get through with this um three batches so we had th not three batches three different things this was a juice with two liters of juice 500 grams of sugar and that was a normal cider yeast and that took like ages I think it's about, oh, call it about eight weeks plus the conditioning. This one was the fresh juice and that was used in the turbo yeast. That's the kind of whole idea of the experiment. And this was the fake juice, which was the um, apple juice, this basic like apple juice. So it was that with the turbo yeast as well. As obviously if you watch the video, the one with the fresh juice took forever. And the turbo yeast, like according to the packet, it meant to be literally two to five days, it's done. But no, this one was done really quickly, and yet this one was not. Um, I couldn't understand it, I was worried that it's going to get spoiled, because in case it's sitting there for too long with the um, sediment was floating up, and I was worried it's going to be um, basically going rotten and spoiling, but it didn't, but it just took ages. So the experiment was, is to basically see whether I can create a cider using the turbo yeast really, really quickly. Um, I normally, I love cider, and I either drink inches or I like Henry Weston's, which is 8.2%. I also do like the old Rosie, hence the bottles, but it costs in £6.80 a bottle, and this meant to be a 6.8%. And it is really nice, it's flat cider, it's cloudy cider, and it's really good. I did also try the Weston's cloudy cider, from Amazon and that was absolutely revolting. So I would never buy this again, but the bottles come in handy. So my point was, rather than spending six pounds 80 of two liter bottle, which is quite a lot, um, I wanted to basically try and recre recreate my own quickly and we'll see what the results are. I'm a little bit scared because I have been obviously tasting stuff um, as I was brewing this, as I was settling and well, let's give it a go. Just for, um, to let you know, because I did this in the bigger damage arms, I had the spare stuff on the bottles. So rather than me opening the bigger bottles, which are going to be sitting in the storage, I've had extra, which I bottled in a normal fizzy water bottles. Um, many people said before, oh no, you can't put the um, anything that's like, basically could be fizzy. I have added on the um, Camden tablet in there, not Camden, sorry. Um, the fizzy tablet in there by Cooper's. I said, oh, you can't put this in because pressure, they will explode. They don't. Those water bottles are designed for a sparkling water anyway, so they're designed to take a pressure. Proven the pudding. It's been sitting there for a few weeks. It's hard, it's definitely expanded, but something tells me there's no fizz in there. 
nonetheless the bottles are fine and they do not explode um so i've got this but with the little one this was a bit like an afterthought i do not have a spare little bottle so i have to open this so let's start with <laughs> the weakest percentage so this one the normal yeast one is ten and a half percent and then the fresh juice is 14 and a half and the um other one is 14 though i almost want to bet to differ however right let's get them pouring okay i have to open the hole Tiny bit of fizz in there then. Okay. It smells like a vitamin C tablet. Okay. And also I wanted to let you know I have used the bentonite on the um the one that I used the juice and the um turbo yeast to clear this. And I have left this one without. I left it to be cloudy and it settled as much as possible by itself. So, okay, so we have that. I put that to the side. Right, let's pour this one. This one, there was no, um, no fizzy tablet. <laughs> Just, oh my God, the color is amazing. It's like rosé. This is crazy. And I tell you guys, I'm not like, um, I don't film, I know one, some of you commented before, I don't film this as, um, I don't make brewery my lifetime hobby or like filming this. It's a hobby, sorry, but it's not like a filming hobby. So I don't, um, I'm a novice at filming with a brewery, yet I've been brewing for a while. Right, okay. I was worried about this one because let's see if it's going to be fizzy or not. Okay, I think I've put two tablets in there, but it doesn't feel like it's got fizz, not a lot. Okay, it's definitely fizzy, it's certainly sparkling. Okay, look at that, it looks beautiful. Right, can you see that? I hope you can see that. Totally different colours, totally, first two are cloudy. The one where they obviously bentonite been cleared, it's not, it's perfectly crisp. You can see that. So, taste test, okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Conditioning apparently made to make like a whole lot of difference. So, if I just get those guys out of the way, sorry, you can see. Right, so, juice and normal yeast. It smells like, literally, guys, smells like, I can't say smell like a cider, it smells a bit like. Um, a vitamin C tablet if you ever had them they just got this little weird smell it's very sweet it's very it got a tiny tiny bit of fizz in it I think it's got a little bit like afterburn if that makes sense it heats in my throat a bit I think, um, yeah, I can feel it burning, 10.5%. I think that tastes like a really nice apple wine, or very close, I would say, to, to Henry Weston's. Not I wanted to offend them with my shit attempt, but... Yeah, I, li I think I'll drink that. No, I think, I will drink that, I like that. It certainly took... Took a while, and I think with the, with the small bottle, there's not like I go through this bottle in like a couple of days. There's no problem at all. So if I do this, I have to do this on a bigger scale. But yeah, that's drinkable, guys. I, you, it's drinkable, and it's only room temperature. And here, I think it's about I don't know, thirteen, fourteen degrees. So it's pretty cool. Okay, right. Let's try this one. So this is I know this is the strongest one. Let's try this one. So. This is the cleared one with the turbo yeast. Okay, look at that. It's nice, it's clear. Let's see if it's fizzy first. Well, actually, it smells... It smells fruitier. Fruitier than that somehow. Oh my God, it's actually gone fizzy. That fizz worked. Very fine fizz. Very fine fizz. It's strong, it's very strong, but 
it's quite dry as well. <clears throat> you certainly don't get the hit of the sugar like you do with that one. Definitely not. And I don't seem to get the afterburn with that one down, down, the, um, down my throat. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite heavy, if that makes sense. I think if you sip it as a wine, like a sparkling wine, I think that's fine because it is obviously it's 14% it's quite strong but it's actually it's nice I think to be fair I did work out how much they cost and it cost me almost three or four times less in price than to buy the cider like in those bottles no of course it doesn't taste the same but it, it's strong you can taste it strong but it's lovely it, it's good it's good. If I let my husband to try this, he'd be like, oh no, it's like a rocket fuel. But I tell you that, guys, the difference, when I tasted it before I bottled it, whilst I was bottling this, it was night and day. I actually tested and it, it was literally, all I could taste is a pure alcohol and I have the aftertaste of the yeast, the brewing process. It was a bit, mm, so, and it was literally rocket fuel. Like all it, it was so harsh, so horrible. There's no flavors developed. Now it's sat there, it's settled, and all this, I assume, all that stuff there, that really gave you this horrible, yeasty, weird taste, but it's settled, and it's, my goodness, I'm really, I'm actually quite happy with that. And that fizz will make it different from, obviously, the rest. However, I did not put any fizzy tablets in the bottle because I really wasn't sure whether they're going to work or not. So, last one is the strongest one, 14.5%, so fresh juice, kilo of sugar, and it was 35 grams of turbo yeast and lo and behold the golden rosé colour oh it actually smells like a candy yeah it smells very different to sorry all three smell totally different okay I have my hopes on this one to be the best tasting because it took me forever to juice that with my juicer and I nearly broke my poor little electric Chinese juicer, but let's try it. Okay. Um, I'm increasing in the strength, but I feel it's decreased. It tastes more like a grapefruit, somehow. Whether it's that the mind messes up because of the colour, it looks like a grapefruit juice, I don't know. But, um, it's a hard one, guys. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> no, that's really upsetting. It's really upsetting. Um, to me it tastes like plain apple juice, diluted with a little bit of grape juice, so it's got the bitterness, and it's just, um, a little bit bitter altogether. Um, yes, yeah, so guys, it's not sure. I don't, I don't find this pleasant. I'm so, so gutted. Just doesn't feel, it doesn't give it give me anything fresh like I would expect with the apple juice it doesn't give me even the depth I expected a depth of flavor I used two different varieties of apples I use the green apples and I use the red apples um, I can't remember the the name of them but however I did expect and the color made me look like it should really be a really you know flavorsome appley thing because whilst it was brewing again I was tasting this halfway through the process and this was a winner I was adamant this is going to be the best juice because it's made from the fresh apples. So, okay, right, last test. I'm sorry if it's dragging on, but I need to rate them in the order of my drinking priorities. Rocket fuel is now great. Fizzy wine. You can call it a wine because it's so strong. Yeah, okay. Sorry. 
see because I haven't scripted this right I'm doing this only and my brain is processing quickly because I don't want to keep you holding but my brain needs to make his mind up right okay <sighs> my verdict and oh my god um okay number one I'll go with that it's it seems to be the crispest the freshest with the deeper aftertaste with less burn of alcohol considering it's like second highest at 14% so right and this is going to be number two is the normal yeast and still juice it seems to be the it's got more afterburn in the back I mean afterburn I mean it's burning my throat with the alcohol but it's only ten and a half percent and I've Kid you not, my throat is used to taking hard liquor and alcohol, so it's not like I'm being, you know, being a girl about it. I just feel it burning at the back. Um, so that will be number two. And this guy is, unfortunately, is number three. Although it breaks my heart to, um, just breaks my heart to spend so much time and apples doing this. Um, it does not, unfortunately, yield a really pleasant result. So there we have it. It's totally unexpected. And the reason I did this experiment because one of you or a couple of you actually suggested using a turbo yeast to speed up the process of brewing. As I said, we've been brewing for absolutely years, but never really considered brewing a turbo yeast with a turbo yeast. Um, and to be fair, the one that come up at the 14%, they only took a week. For a week, I can brew this with the cheap juice. At the moment, the, it's like... 69 pence I think for a litre of juice so I can certainly and the turbo yeast the big packet um, It's like oh my god four pounds 65 on Amazon or something four pounds 45 and is a big packet I only use 35 grams so technically yeah, this is the winner so to me um, If I put less sugar, I can make this a little bit probably less strong and a bit, a bit more palatable as a daily drinking cider because 14% is pretty much like drinking wine. I drink wine on a fairly regular basis, more regular probably than I should. Nonetheless, um, if I drop the drop the sugar, there should be less percentage and it should be done quicker. So would I do this again? 100%. As I said, at some point I thought I really wouldn't because of the really alcoholic, pure alcohol taste. And I thought if that really didn't work and it tasted like really disgusting, I have a mama vinegar, which I make my own vinegar from. The um, We've got the... Um, access to some apples, the, the fresh apples. Um, so I can make vinegar if that didn't work, but that tastes like great now. So what it looks like I'm end up doing is to get in making a vinegar from this because I don't think I really can drink that, which is really disappointing. So anyway, so out of those two, because this was first, this was second, that took for weeks to do. All the color is totally different, or that this one is not being cleared. Um, that yeast, again, is still fairly expensive, so by by price, volume, the turbo yeast is cheaper. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm saying that turbo yeast, would I do this again? Absolutely. Unexpected result? Absolutely. Would I do this again? Absolutely. Would I try turbo yeast with making a uh, rhubarb wine, or rhubarb cider, shall I say, because I have some rhubarb growing my allotment? Absolutely. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. Obviously, this is not a brewing channel, but this is... My channel is all about preparing for the hard things, hard times to come and be able to supply ourselves with the stuff that we need or we want in this instance to get us through the tough times if we're not able to get something from the shops. So, and plus it's healthier and it's better because it's our own. So anyway, anyway guys, thumbs up. Hopefully you liked it. Any comments, questions, please, um, please comment below and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.